Sunu, you're Vietnamese. You lived outside of your country for many years, and eight years ago you went back. Yes. Why did you go back? Uh, I was born in Vietnam, and I left Vietnam to live in Denmark and Germany for more than 20 years. What made me come back to Vietnam was that I had a chance to come back and work with the people that I know and the country and the people that need uh, our expertise from outside because it's a developing country, uh, fast growing next to China in Asia. So of course I took a chance to uh, develop our own businesses, also helping the people to get better living standards and get knowledge of, uh, let's say, the Western way of doing business. Well, you obviously know your country. Um, you, uh, I take it that you're acting in a way as a kind of a translator and facilitator from right. people from the outside exactly. who don't know your country. Right, because uh, what you just talk about, what people call me banana in Vietnam, because uh, <laughs> born Vietnamese with yellow skin, but the education and the work process, the procedures, whatever knowledge I gain from working outside of Vietnam, I bring to Vietnam. So that's I'm um, um, interpreter and also building bridge between the cultures and the businesses. Your company is a uh, is a consulting group essentially. That's right. Who are your clients these days? Our clients are being many different uh, type of businesses, but mainly focusing on the financial. Uh, institution, the developers, and also technology partners who are looking for local partners uh, in order to bring the technologies and and uh, the solution to the countries in, in the China region. Are there still problems doing business in Vietnam? I wouldn't say problems. I we always say that challenges <laughs> because the challenges related to the risk. The glass is half full. Yes. <laughs> exactly because the problem sounds very very serious and which are I mean but understanding the people the culture before you enter to the markets will help you to be well prepared so uh, what our job is to not identify the opportunities but to help them to understand the challenges and the risk of being uh, re involved with uh, people which you don't know you don't even speak the language you don't know what they think, you don't know what they do, or what they say is actually what they're going to do also. So understanding from both sides, and the local people also having uh, difficulties to understand the way of doing business and how to be compliant to each other is uh, our job. Do you operate uh, with the clients mostly in the former South Vietnam, or, or is it beginning to be also in the North? Uh, well, we do. Uh, it's kind of subdivided because related to the economy, economic uh, developments is more uh, in the South. But in terms of uh, state-owned project, with working with the state-owned enterprises and getting this government support, we go to Hanoi and work with the, 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 uh, the ministries and the authorities. And we do that in uh, all three countries, I mean Vietnam, Laos and Cambodia. Mm -hmm. uh, how, how would you compare Laos and Cambodia uh, in terms of business opportunities to Vietnam? Uh, today Vietnam is also, we saying it's a big ship and uh, it's moving slow but uh, in the way very steady, whereas uh, Cambodia we used to compare Cambodia being Vietnam for 10, 15 years ago. And with a population of 15 million in Cambodia versus 86 million in Vietnam and 5, 6 million in Laos, uh, Vietnam is the so-called big brother uh, guiding uh, Cambodia and Laos to do the same just over the years.